Well, hello everyone. I'm Sybil Starr and I'm here to share the, share the astrology for the full moon in Aries. Uh, the full moon occurs at 24 degrees, 34 minutes of Aries on October 17th at 425 a.m. Pacific time. So let's begin by looking at the chart, okay? All right, so here it is. Here is the chart. So here is, like I said, uh, it occurs October 17th. 425 a.m. Pacific time and the moon is here at 24 degrees and 20 34 minutes of Aries and it is opposite the sun at 24 degrees 34 minutes of Libra full moon always uh, is opposite the sun and it's important to remember that the moon has no light of her own she reflects the light of the sun and so it also represents our relationship with the sun and where we are in that process all right. Now, this full moon is in what is called a grand cross or a grand square with Mars. Mars is here at 22 degrees, 55 minutes of uh, Cancer. And so it's square, both the sun and the moon. Uh, and it's opposite Pluto. Pluto is at 29 degrees uh, of Capricorn. And so that creates a grand square. And we're going to be talking a little more deeply about what that means. But a square, just to kind of start off, is really a very intense energy that is just pushing all of our edges. It's kind of, it, it's, it's uh, something that really makes us, pushes us out of our comfort zone in a really big way to expand and grow. All right. Now, the other thing that is going on of super significance is we've got two grand trines. So that's uh, and a grand trine is three points. It looks like a triangle. It's an easy flow of energy. It brings gifts, talents, protection. Um, and so and then the other and that's in water. We've got two. We've got one in water and one in earth. So at this time that we're having all of this uh, um, volatile energy energy and, and things really busting free and pushing our edges, we also have divine protection and divine flow. Okay. All right. So what we've got, the Grand Trine includes Pluto. It's here at 29 Capricorn. It's trine Uranus at 26 Taurus. Uh, and then it trines Vesta at 25 Virgo and then back to Pluto. And then that's the Earth Grand Trine. Now we've got a water grand trine. We've got Venus at 29, uh, 35 minutes of Scorpio. Trine Neptune at 27 degrees, 48 minutes of Neptune. Excuse me, a Pisces. Uh, and then trine um, Mars at 22, 55 minutes of Cancer. And then back to um uh, Venus. Now, we also have some kites in here, and a kite shows that there is <clears throat> is kind of the release point of the um, grand trine. And so they're in here as well. But we're really going to focus more on the geometric pattern of the Merkaba and what that means for us. All right. Now we're going to stop sharing. We're going to talk about what all of that actually means. Okay, so I always like to start with talking about the archetype of the energies involved. And so the full moon is in Aries. So what is an Aries archetype? And of course, an archetype means a basic pattern. And our uh, Aries is... The evolutionary goal of Aries is courage. And so to develop courage, it indicates that we may need to walk through the fires of our own fears. We may need to confront them. And that may include setting up boundaries where we say no, as well as where we say yes. It's, it's having the courage to claim what we want and the ability to say no to what we don't want. Aries kind of helps us draw that line in the sand. Uh, and it, that indicates it's also the protector energy. It, it, Aries is a warrior, but the higher a level of the warrior is the protector, the one who protects those who cannot protect themselves and also self-protection. OK, it's where we stand our ground. Uh, Aries is a pioneer. It's a leader. Uh, it, 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 Aries is the one, like they say, um, 
you often will find in areas, let's say you're you're in a uh, area of exploration, uh, you're often going to find Aries at the helm because they're they really do have the courage to go out into unknown, unexplored territory. So a pioneer, Aries indicates a passionate desire nature, uh, and it's also it's ruled by Mars, and Mars is where we take action. Aries is also brings teachings of the use of our free will choice because Aries is the first sign it comes out and it's you know it, it's about me it's about ourselves and and one of the ways we express ourselves in the world is through our free will choice and um so the key, the key of course it, it it represents our egoic will but ultimately our egoic will is meant to align with divine will and divine will is actually uh, our soul template our soul plan okay but it, our egoic will often has that exploratory kind of nature that expands our boundaries okay um and it can indicate also having a strong will, but it's really important to know that is a strong will really serving your highest good, okay, or where it's taking you. Having a strong will is good, but it's important to be aligned with divine will, not just egoic will, our our needs and desires, okay, but our soul desire, which is our soul plan. And what the shadow, it can be foolhardy, uh, it can be selfish and it can be aggressive. All right. Now we always at the full moon, we need to talk about the uh, axis of the two energies involved. And in this one is Aries and Libra. Libra is the opposite sign. Like I talk, talked about the sun being in Libra. And so it, Libra is so much about balance. You know, it's the scales. And um, so the the Aries Libra axis is about the balance of self versus other. Libra is where we recognize there are others. The Aries is so much about who we are, but then Libra brings in, but there are others. And how do you interact with them? And how do you have a relationship? Okay. And I feel like a big piece of what is happening is asking us to heal the divide within us and with others and to come back into wholeness. Because this axis brings up all dualities, the dualities between masculine and feminine, doing and being, work and play, light and dark, and how to, as we come into balance, we will eventually have integration, which is ultimately the key. Uh, because when we are out of balance, we can project our stuff onto others and create an us versus them polarity, or what is called polarity consciousness. And so the heat, so it's about the healing of the polarity within ourselves and the world. And it, what polarity consciousness can indicate is two components of the same body with a different focus. Like I said, first balance and then integration. And, you know, a big piece of polarity consciousness has to do with our separation from source, because the truth of the matter is we are all one. But when we decide to become a soul and to incarnate, it does create this duality. And the key is ultimately to come back together as one. OK, all right. Or that remembrance that we are all one to come back into unity consciousness. That is ultimately what it is about. And um, yeah, but the most, but when one of the ways through this is to find common ground with others, to recognize, yes, the self, we're always going to be, uh, we're never going to be able to uh, um, come into complete agreement with anyone else because we're all here to have a different perspective but and, and because that's what grows the greater reality but to then find common ground it's the most important thing it's the only way to heal our world and times of crisis often pull us together, uh, such as in North Carolina. I'm just hearing wonderful stories of how the people coming together to help each other, regardless of political beliefs, which is the great divide now. To know that the beliefs are just our beliefs. They're not the truth. It may feel like the truth for us on some level, but the bigger truth is that we are all one and to bring us into unity consciousness.
And um, and I also wanted to share that, you know, I, I did volunteer work in Katrina, and I certainly found that to be the case, that it was people helping each other that really made the difference and, uh, and letting go of all of these false divisions between us. All right. And what is most important now is how we treat each other while we also take care of ourselves. And that requires great courage. I found this great quote that I really like, and it says, your capacity to allow people to live a truth completely opposite of yours without shutting them off and with compassion is a reflection of how powerful your love is. This whole, this is so much about the power of love. Okay. All right. Now this moon is also conjunct the dwarf planet Eris. She's also at 24 degrees. I didn't point that out, but 24 degrees, I believe it's, I don't know, 49 minutes or something. Anyway, uh, to me, so, so Eris is a Greek goddess of discord, and she brings conflict when things are out of balance. And to me, she represents those who do not have a seat at the table and whose voices are not heard. She is the feminine warrior, and the feminine warrior lost her seat at the table many thousands of years ago. But she is emerging with Eris, and she does speak for those who need to have a voice, who have no voice. And the other thing is, is asking us to be willing to listen to other points of view, Points of view that are not the popular ones because they will not go away because they need to be heard. Okay. Because they are part of the conversation. Points of view that you may not agree with. Okay. All right. Now, the sun is conjunct a very powerful star, Arcturus. And Arcturus at this moment is actually at 24 degrees, 34 minutes of Libra. So at this full moon, we have an exact conjunction with Arcturus. And Arcturus is a star of unconditional love, and they are protectors of Mother Earth. They say that Arcturians say they are responsible for the human experiment here on Mother Earth and are deeply committed to our evolution. And the Arcturians say that they will help anyone who wants to evolve. So this full moon would be a wonderful time to connect with um, the Arcturian energy of unconditional love. They are high frequency beings who can take shape, but it's not easy for them to, to take shape in a 3D reality. So to know that you will probably feel them or you may see them, but maybe not necessarily in 3D. Some say they are our guardian angels as they often appear that way to, other, to humans. They are masters of light. And as I said, they say they will work with anyone who wants to evolve their consciousness. Just invite them in. They are here now to help us to make this powerful shift in consciousness. And one of the most important teachings of the Arcturians is due to the fact that they have been able to master their emotions. They live in a state of inner peace. They are masters of inner peace. And they tell us that we must be the peace we need to see in the world and that we must be at peace with ourselves because we are in the midst of some great storms. And the way, one of the ways to calm the storms is that we must come from that place of peace because as they say, you know, like attracts like. And so as we are peaceful, we can put that out into the field and it actually, like I said, calms the storm. And to be master of our emotions as they may be running high. So we need to find our center. Be We can calm the storm with our own inner peace. Okay. And it is said also, uh, the Arcturians are said to impart the ability to be a pathfinder, to show a new way forward. Now we've got that big grand cross, which is actually... Like I said, it is the storm that we are dealing with. And the thing is, um, they say, you know, uh, well, Mars, we talked about Mars and Aries is like the warrior. It can be, uh, it's helping us deal with conflict, places that are out of balance because things don't come into balance just, you know, by us wishing them. We often need to take action. And Mars is where it shows us where to take action, to, be, to bring things back into balance. 
And uh, Mars is um, the god of war and 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 um, our desire nature, where we take action and our free will choice. And Pluto, they say, is the higher octave of Mars. It goes deeper, deeper into our desire nature, our soul desire, and our divine plan. And Pluto is very disruptive. He's known as the god of death and rebirth, or death transformation and rebirth. And um, so these two planets and, and 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 this these two planets create a very volatile and intense field i'm sure we we know it's there we can feel it you know we're in the middle of a, a very contentious election we have wars in the middle east and ukraine and we've have having catastrophic weather events uh the field is very volatile and mars and pluto are dancing together uh, for the next three months in a very intense way. Then they meet up three times over the next six months. Um, and the first exact opposition is on November 3rd. And the last degree of cancer, they're both cancer, uh, excuse me, Mars and Pluto are both at, at 29 degrees. <clears throat> excuse me, which is the anoretic degree, a degree of crisis. It's called our last chance saloon and pressure is being applied. Um, <clears throat> and what I want to say here is that uh, Mars goes retrograde. That's why they're having such an intense encounter. It's like, okay, so Mars... Um, Mars goes up to like six degrees of um, Leo uh, and and in its way, in its path, it's going to oppose Pluto at 29 degrees of Cancer, a Capricorn. Then Pluto, Mars is going to go retrograde and come uh, and at, they're going to have, we're going to meet up again. Mars and Pluto are going to meet up again at one degree of Aquarius and Leo in early December, excuse me, early January, and then they're going to meet up one third time in April. But the real intense opposition, I believe, is for the next three months. Um, well, three, yeah, the next th three and a half months, mid-October through the end of January. Then it kind of lets up a bit. But it's a super intense kind of a, like a pressure. Uh, when you think of the weather, and you know, when, when a pressure builds and then a storm occurs, okay? And we are in the middle of some big storms, all right? And so if you have planets in the late degrees of Cancer or Capricorn uh, or Leo Aquarius, the event might be particularly eventful. Uh, also, uh, I would say square. So it would be Cancer, Capricorn, uh, and Aries, Libra. Right. And then also brings in Taurus and Scorpio. So all of these signs are going to be getting the late degrees of the cardinal signs and the early degrees of the fixed signs put it that way okay all right so the late degrees of the cardinal signs are cancer capricorn libra and aries and the late the early degrees of the fixed signs aquarius leo scorpio and taurus you know over these next three months there could be some um uh, a whole lot of shaking going on okay <laughs> All right. All right. So anyway, and it's also combined with increased solar flares and geomagnetic storms. So it's like the the light is coming in, it's being activated and uh, and it's 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 creating a, an abundance of energy. OK. All right. So on a personal basis, we may experience power struggles, a battle of wills with others because Pluto, Mars and Pluto have to do with will and how we use our will. And so we may be having and, and oppositions. It's, 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 the, uh, it's the mirror reflection. Um, you know, I am you are another me. And so it's often something about ourselves that we need to see that is coming into our field. But it can create a power struggle. That's really a battle within your own self to align your egoic will with divine will or your soul contract. 
We also may have experienced projections put upon us or the other way around, projecting onto each other. So it's important to own our stuff. This is a confrontation with our own shadow material, uh, which is trauma held it, it, it's trauma held within our field, within especially within our emotional body. Pluto is very much about emotional healing. He's like the roto rooter. He goes in and he's really cleaning out deep. We are being shown that we are strong enough to look at it and heal from old trauma, to look at old trauma and to heal from it, and and release responses that are based in trauma. You know, we may have a way of responding to the world that really no longer serves us once we are healed. Both Mars and Pluto are about our desire nature, and it goes deep into really, what do I really want? And either if I'm not clear or I think I can't have it, then it, what actually happens is that it matches your fear vibration. And when we let go of our fears and uh, we are then allowed to, allowed to align with our deepest desires that come from the soul and then manifest them. But it's a time to begin looking at your fears as a reflection of what you need to see about yourself. Don't look away. As you look fear in the eye, you will begin to see a transformation in yourself. The fear will fall away once you face it, you feel it, and let it go. It will transform into love. There's that saying, everything you want is on the other side of fear. So a, a big piece of this energy is conquering our fear and fear is in the mind and it is a construct in the third dimension. It is said fear does not exist in the higher frequencies. We are living in this, this 3D matrix of fear and control and this is what we're busting through. This is what we're breaking through, but we each have to look at our own and that actually helps us also the, the collective face, the collective fears and the shadows and the traumas. Okay, and to trust in ourselves and creator. I see this energy as like the tower card in the tarot, if you're familiar with the tarot. It's the most healing card in the deck, but can also be the storm, sudden change, um, and sudden change and upheaval. And look, we can look at it as the storm that clears the path. Because uh, we it's a shadow clearing catalyst as we free ourselves from the limitations and restrictions. And as we know, it's also the collective shadow that is coming up. Pluto is a slow moving planet, but when activated can be like a volcanic eruption, a release that ultimately brings healing, but can initially bring chaos. And Mars I've talked about before is a catalyst. When Mars is around, things happen. Okay. And Capricorn is about the structures that hold up our civilization. Pluto is transiting in Capricorn. Uh, Pluto shows us where these structures, institutions, the structures that hold up our civilization, the institutions, uh, this is more on a collective level is what we're seeing here. So Pluto shows us where they are corrupted and out of integrity. And Pluto is just bearing down on this 29 degrees where it's been for the last, it really is, is there for almost two months, uh, two and a half months, actually. And it's going to move into Aquarius on uh, November 19th, but it's bearing down and it's going to be there through the election. And so the Sabian symbol for 29 degrees of Capricorn, I've talked about it in my other videos and I'm going to, it's going to stay, I'm going to talk about it until it's gone because it's so important because we're not going to see Capri we're not going to see Pluto and Capricorn for another 248 years once it leaves this is like what they call the last chance saloon of the crisis and so the symbol sabian symbol is directors of a large firm meet in secret and so I feel like during this time many secrets of our government banking and military come into come they come into light and the truth underlying many of the secrets that are held by those in power are coming to light okay pluto and capricorn is a big reality check and with the united states being in the midst of its pluto return we may be shown some very hard and bitter truths about who we have become as a nation and our leadership but when we can acknowledge it we can make choices that align with the higher good instead of choices made from the trauma and fear, which is trying to 
is trying to be released. Now, what's interesting, I find this super interesting, the Sabian symbol for Mars at 29 degrees. And like I said, this exact conjunction will happen in early, I don't know if I said it, but it will happen in early November. Uh, like, I don't know, if I can't remember the second or the third, something like that. Actually, just before the election. <laughs> anyway, it's the Sabian symbol is so powerful. It is daughter of the American Revolution. And this symbol seems to me to indicate the power struggle is between the powerful elite, the uh, the directors of a large firm who are running things in secret without us knowing about it, and the people. We it you know it reminds me of what our ancestors who founded this country fought for. They and they why this country was even created. Um, they say it was a miracle that the United States Revolution was a success and that there was lots of help from the other side because there is a prophecy that the next enlightened civilization will be in North America. And in the midst of this Pluto return, there will be a death and rebirth of who we are as a nation as we move into a fifth dimensional reality. This is the bigger picture. We have our own personal struggles, but there is also a bigger picture that we are moving into. The important thing, I want to say that differently. There is a bigger picture that we are part of. Okay. The important thing is to keep your center and stay calm as we traverse the chaos of this breakdown. And that in itself is a huge challenge. That is super hard to do. But to know that we are in what is called the purification times and the collective grief is rising as we have seen so much death and destruction here on Mother Earth through uh, the, the different storms and the collapse of so many and the wars and so many different things. But uh, as the Kogi, the, the tribe from the uh, Sierra Madres in South America says it is a time when the end is falling into the beginning. And they're both true. There is a big ending. The paradigm we've been living in is collapsing and we are creating something new, but it is chaos, chaos and purification. We are, but because we are still in the ending with much change and chaos and many are leaving this reality, creating personal and collective grief. Just to know the collective grief is really intense in the field. People are suffering and people are feeling it. Pluto says that we must feel to heal. Pluto is the roto-rooter. It takes us down into those deep places. And know that the feeling can be very intense. And if it is not your personal but collective grief, it's important to feel it and let it pass through you. It may attach to an to, un, to old unresolved trauma. And you don't have to remember or attach a story. It's just feel it, breathe through it, and let it go. And many are going through their own deep personal grief as well right now and know that grief is a transformative process and it is a process and you will take your own time to do it however you do it and to be gentle and kind to yourselves. But when we allow ourselves to feel our emotional pain, it allows for it to transmute into love. And that is the new beginning. It's just, and, and you know, it is said that the feeling of emotion lasts 90 seconds. And after that, the feeling of the emotion lasts 90 seconds, whatever it is. And if we suffer after that, it is the story around it. And to just keep that in mind, okay? Because we are going through a complete metamorphosis and we may be in the dark for a while until the butterfly emerges. And as Jung said, in all chaos, there is a cosmos. In all disorder, a secret order. There is a divine plan. And we, as we are breaking free of the 3D fear control matrix and to do that, our frequency must align with the high vibrational energy of the photon belt where we are currently traveling. And ultimately, the tower card, as I spoke of earlier, is about a spiritual awakening. 
We can see it as being blasted from the inside with high vibrational light that implodes the structures. These high frequency energies are coming in with the geomedic storms and the solar flares, and it is activating our own light code. So the light is coming from within, breaking these old structures. Okay, a pillar of light activation within us and anything not aligned with this high frequency light will ultimately fall away with a cleansing and a, but a cleansing and purification is also part of the process. Pluto is conjunct Aquila, uh, the stars of Aquila, um, Altair being the main one, and it is the stars of the eagle. And the eagle is the the only bird, the only animal we're aware of that, or that I'm aware of, that flies into the storm, flies directly into the storm to get above the storm, to fly over the storm, okay? And so is having the courage to fly into this storm, confront our fear so that we can rise through it, rise above it and, and see the bigger picture. And when we rise above the storm, we do not participate in the drama, but the evolution that the storm is bringing. Pluto says, evolve or die, and sometimes brings the storm to clear the way forward. And to know there is a revolution coming, <clears throat> but it is a revolution in consciousness as we remember our own divine nature and that of everyone else. The Sabian symbol for this full moon is a double promise reveals its inner and outer meaning. This symbol shows to me that what a first appears, what something first appears to be may reveal itself to actually be something else. So what may look like a big challenge is actually an opportunity in disguise. The world in chaos and breakdown is preparing for the new world that is to come. All right. And the last thing we're going to talk about here is the Merkaba or the Star of David. I want to show you the image here. Okay. Okay. All right. So here's this Merkaba. And so as I talked about, it's it's on a on a um one dimensional level, it looks like a tri uh, inter two intersecting triangles. Here's the first triangle, okay? And we could just say this is, you know, Pluto, Uranus, and Vesta, okay? On uh, the other triangle, which is right here, we might say Venus, Neptune, and Mars, okay? And on a 3D level, it actually creates what is called a tet tetrahedron. And as they, um, they each move in an opposite direction, creating a vehicle of consciousness. So I wanna just talk about what this means first. Okay, so the grand water trine, Venus in Scorpio, Mars in Cancer, Neptune in Pisces, indicates an easy flow of emotion, creativity, and connection and allows us to open our hearts and we need to keep our hearts open and allow the emotions to flow and to be gentle with ourselves in these turbulent times. The grand earth trine of Uranus and Taurus <clears throat> and Pluto, Capricorn and Vesta and Virgo is about being grounded and centered fully in our bodies, where we feel everything when we are fully present, but gives us the opportunity to feel and then release it. As we, as we are present in our bodies is when we can really feel it and then release it. And we are also clearing the collective emotional body. There is a great shaking going on and much of the old trauma, not only our own, but the collective of uh, Mother Earth as well. And as the old forms collapse, it creates an opening for new ones to enter while anchoring the increased light coming in. <clears throat> We're being asked to confront our fears, surrender to divine will, and trust the process that is unfolding. Know that it is in your highest good and the highest good of all, even if we don't understand it. This Merkaba represents the interconnectedness, and that's the whole image here. The, the Merkaba and how it all works together, the two uh, trines, the interconnectedness of the spiritual and physical realms serving as a vehicle for spiritual evolution. You could think of it as spirit coming into matter. <clears throat> 
the combination of masculine and feminine, the mask, the light being masculine and the feminine being matter, spirit into matter, also known as the light body or chariot. And some believe it enables individuals to transcend their physical limitations and access higher realms of consciousness. And, and it is also an opening for higher dimensional beings to assist with the creation of a new earth. The light body of earth being activated with higher frequencies for the ascension to occur, we need to align our frequency with Mother Earth as she ascends into higher dimensions. And the fuel is the love in our hearts. Okay. All right. And so Neptune, I wanted to speak just a little bit more about Neptune because Neptune in this grand trine reminds us that we are never alone and that we can call and ask for help. Our guides and angels, please do. They are waiting for our call. And it, we are in a field of miracles and the power of prayer is stronger than ever as evidenced by how many groups were praying to calm, to bring the calm to Hurricane Milton and Milton responded. It went from a category five to a category three by the time it made landfall. And to know during this time, our prayers, our group prayers are especially powerful. It is a balance between being and doing. When we stay calm and centered within ourselves and then call for the calm uh, in the external world while focusing our intention or our prayer in motion, that it will manifest quickly. So it's about being calm within ourselves. We know like, um, like attracts like and putting that into the field with a strong focus and intention. It will manifest Okay, And to know that during this time, we have divine protection, that we are held in this powerful Merkaba of love as more of the frequencies of Mother Earth are shifting into 5D, the fifth dimensional reality, which is not a place, but a frequency. It's a state of being. And what is most important is what lies in our hearts and how we treat each other in these difficult times of transition from one world to another. And I love this quote from Jimi Hendrix. I know every, everyone's probably heard it. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. And it is up to each of us to live that love and to live in a state of inner peace. And we will be at peace when we love ourselves and each other, for that is the vibration of the new earth. All right. Well, blessings to all. Um, this is a very powerful time. There's so much intense energy and to know that we are not powerless and that it is what lives in our heart that matters most because that is what really changes our world. All right. Wishing everyone a wonderful uh, few weeks until I see you again with the next video. Um, if you like this video, please check like and subscribe. And if you're interested in a reading, uh, my information is in the description box below. All right. Namaste and blessings to all.